Today we're going to be taking a look at the Titan hydraulic brake lines and fittings for single axle trailers. Part number is T4829900. Now for running our hydraulic lines from our calipers here up to the front of your trailer, that's really of course going to depend on your application. But I like to start just kind of loosely installing things. So we're going to pull this yellow cap out of the caliper. You see our flexible line here. Two of them are going to have these 90 degree bends. We're going to thread that in to where we pulled that yellow cap out. And again, we're just going to loosely install everything for now. We'll come back through and tighten everything up later. Now this line is going to come up to our frame. There's going to be a block that holds it here. It's just a little clip we put on slide this through and then we put in an additional clip there. So that's going to lock this position out. It's going to give us plenty of room for our brake line to flex. Now beyond that we're going to thread a hard line into the end of this fitting. Generally on the driver's side I'm going to use the shorter one. See that's going to thread in right here. But we need to ensure that we put our T-block which is here, we've got the incoming line from the actuator that goes in here. This is gonna to go to our driver's side, this to our passenger side, or vice versa. Now that, I wanna mount on a fixed surface. So this is a cross member for the trailer. This does not move, it's not like our axles. I don't like mounting anything brake line wise, especially hard lines, to your axles. That movement can cause flex and leak. So we need to mount our T where it's in a good position to get to it. So that's gonna be about right here. I'm gonna keep this down lower. So I'll need to drill a hole here in, and then we'll use a self-tapping screw to secure that right to that cross member. Our hydraulic line is gonna come from the front in and around here to go in here. The short line runs over to here. And then we're going to have the medium length line that's going to run from here. And that's going to go over to the passenger side of the trailer. Now again, every trailer is going to be different. You're going to have different mounting locations. So what we're going to do is go through and get this all set up. And we'll walk you through how we did it and show you exactly how you'll need to do it on your trailer. Again, that's going to depend on your configuration though. Now for running our hydraulic lines from our calipers here up to the front of your trailer, that's really, of course, going to depend on your application, but I like to start just kind of loosely installing things. So we're going to pull this yellow cap out of the caliper. You see our flexible line here. Two of them are going to have these 90 degree bends. We're going to thread that in to where we pulled that yellow cap out. Now this line is going to come up to our frame. There's going to be a block that holds it here. It's just a little clip we put on slide this through and then we put in an additional clip there. So that's going to lock this position out. It's going to give us plenty of room for our brake line to flex. Now here's the attachment point we talked about for our flex line. And again, that's going to fit in like that. So we just need to make sure we've got the slack we need for up and down movement. It's like that's going to be a good spot. You can see the tab here. We want to drill a hole for that first. That's going to be right there. Now we can place that tab into our hole. That'll keep our bracket from moving. We don't want any rotation on it because that's going to change the angle of our line. We're going to use a number 14 self-tapping screw. We'll use that to secure the bottom. So that's going to come up. We'll use our U-clip. Slide that in behind it. like that. I'm going to thread my shorter line in. And again, these are I'm really just going to do these hand tight. If we tighten them all the way, we can't really adjust them. We can't move it side to side. So the last step we'll do is go around and tighten every one of our fittings. Now I'm going to mock up my T fitting just by threading that in. So I will mount that right there, so I need to drill the hole for the tab just below it. 
Now we'll use another self-tapper. We'll secure our tee. And then from this point, going over to the passenger side, we're just gonna do this exact same thing. Now here's a good look at how we've got it set up. You can see we've got our main line runs into our T, then we've got our split here to come over to our driver's side, also over to our passenger side. I like using these loom clamps. They're a metal clamp, zinc coated, and then they've got the rubber inside. Part number is A0250 on them. And I've just used number 12 self-tapping screws to secure those in. Those hold our lines really well. We won't have to worry about them wiggling or vibrating, making contact with something we don't want. Same going across the cross member here. Remember, we're using the main cross member on the trailer. We're not going across an axle. And that's just gonna come over to our hard line bracket here, running into our line. It's eventually just going down to the caliper there. Now we've got everything in position. We've got our lines the way we want them to be ran. Everything's in a safe spot. So now we're gonna go through and we're gonna tighten down all of our fittings to ensure that we've got a good connection. When you're routing your lines, I wouldn't get much more of a bend in it than what we have right here. We need to keep this open. Of course, it's a hollow tube. So just like a plastic straw, if you bend it too far, it creates kind of a pinch point. We want our fluid to be able to flow freely. So that's gonna be about the extent of a bend that you'll wanna put in it. And anytime you're gonna do something like that on that sharp of a bend, a tubing bender is really the way to go or a brake line bender. For the rest of them, kind of here and creating this angle or creating this angle, it's really something you can do by hand. Now for the thin hard line, you wanna use a 3 8 inch. And then for this larger one on your flex hose, that's gonna be a 5 8 just to keep in mind. Now as far as from the T forward, you can see, again, loom clamps. We're just running right along the frame. If yours has accommodations to pass through, that's a good idea. Keep it protected. You just certainly want it to be below this level so it won't actually accidentally get stepped on or something like that. We've continued running that forward here, right into the tongue of our trailer and that heading out the front. Now this is a really long trailer and it has a very long tongue on it. So we've added a four and a half foot piece of flex hose to the end of this just to get us up to the coupler. Your application, you may need to do that. You may not. It's just gonna depend on the overall length of the setup. Now between our actuator and the line that provides fluid to our calipers, we're doing an electric lockout. As your vehicle's backing up, it's gonna cut off that pressure or that brake fluid from locking up the brakes. Basically, this is important when you're backing up a hill and you want to be able to have your trailer wheels turn freely. This prevents that pressure from being sent back. Otherwise, when you started to back up a hill, as the actuator gets compressed, it's gonna apply the brakes. It's gonna make it difficult to back up. Now we'll take the flexible brake line hose. You'll have a shorter one from your kit. Remember, we've kind of lengthened ours a little bit just to make up for the length of the tongue. We're gonna get that secured down. Now, as you start it, also hold this one with a wrench. That way we don't have to worry about this turning on us. For this, you wanna use a 9 16 and then for this, we're gonna stay with the 3 8 With our actuator installed, we've got all of our connections made all the way throughout. It's time to add fluid into the reservoir here on top. So we're going to open that up. Now, the brake fluid you pick, you want to make sure that you just opened it, that you just opened the seal. Brake fluid that sits around for a long time, it draws moisture into it and it reduces its effectiveness. So we want a fresh pint of brake fluid here. Generally, it takes two or three pints to get the entire system flushed, some a little bit more, some a little bit less. We're just gonna top it off, cap it back up. And we'll go through the bleeding process. Now, I cannot stress to you enough the importance of keeping fluid in this reservoir. If you are bleeding the brakes, pumping fluid through it, and this runs dry, 
Well, then you're just gonna pump air into the system and then you have to go through the whole thing again. So be sure every one or two times that you have someone hold the lever, which we'll show you here in just a second, and open that up, that you take a look in there to make sure you've got the pressure or at least the fluid you need to keep it pressurized. Now, something I like about this coupler that we don't see on all of the couplers out there in the market is right here you can see the head of a screw or a bolt that comes out with a lock nut on it. Simply by using a screwdriver, we're able to go to the hole in the coupler. We can get that in front and we can use that to pump our fluid. That's going to generate the pressure that we need to get our fluid all the way back through our lines to our caliper. So what we do, pump it up a little bit here just to get everything primed. Then we're going to have somebody hold this. As they're holding it, we're going to open up our bleeder screws and start letting air out of the system. You'll notice here as we pump that, the air coming up in the reservoir. So that's slowly getting fluid down into our master cylinder that'll eventually work into our line. So we're just gonna do this until we don't see the air here and that it's being pushed all the way back in through the system. And you can kind of see at this point, we have very little, if any, air coming out at all. So that means we're gonna be primed here now it's time to start going to the back. And remember, we're gonna to top off this fluid every chance we get, keep that full. Now for bleeding the system, we're gonna use the top bleeder screw on each side. That's why there's one on the bottom, one on the top. So regardless of which side the caliper goes on, we always wanna use the upper one. We've got the rubber cap, we're gonna take that off. And we wanna turn the smaller portion here. For that, you wanna use a 5 16 lefty loosey righty tighty but you need something to catch the fluid you can see here very sophisticated device that we've come up with basically it's going to be a rubber hose goes in the top of a water bottle so we'll place this over the top of that bleeder and we'll go ahead and have them pump up the brakes once they've got that pressure held we want to open this and by opening it, we're going to release the pressure inside there. It gives us a little bit of air that comes out. And we just need to continue this process until we get rid of all the air that's coming through and we just have pure fluid. Okay, go ahead. You see in the bottom of our bottle here, we've got just a little bit of fluid. Let's watch as we break this open. See those bubbles forming? That's what we're getting rid of. So each one of those bubbles indicates air that's coming out of our line. Okay, now we'll tighten it back up. Go ahead. Now a couple of tips for bleeding the system. Start with the one that's furthest away from the actuator. Basically, if we drew a line, they'd be the same distance, but this one has more brake lines. So we're gonna start here. And you see we still got air coming out, but we're also starting to get a little bit of fluid. Just wanna make sure we can do this three or four times and not have any air come out. At that point, you're pretty much sure that this line's void of any air. We'll go over to the other one. All right, looks like at this point, pure fluid coming out. So we'll just move over to the other side and we can do the same thing there. Now that should take us a lot less time because we don't have to work it all the way from the actuator through all the lines. And once you're done with the side, put that bleeder cap back on just to keep it free of debris. All right, now once we've got that system bled, we want to refill our reservoir and make sure we've got plenty of fluid there. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to apply pressure here. And then we're going to check each of our connection points to make sure we don't have any leaks. We want to check underneath the front of our solenoid there to make sure we don't have any fluid there. If you connected your hose, just like we did, but we used a longer one, you want to check that connection. In this case, we'd have to use a flashlight and we'll look in there in just a second. We're going to check each of the fittings here at the T. You can see each of those are nice and dry. We're going to check our hard line connection to our flexible line. Then we'll check the point in which that flexible line goes into the caliper. As long as everything there is dry with some pressure held on it from up front, should be in really good shape. 
Now we can check out, make sure everything's working, which we know it is, but it's good to do. What we're gonna do is rotate our tire here, we'll get it spinning, and we'll have somebody manually activate the brakes for us up there. You see, comes to a nice stop. And that'll complete our installation of the Titan Hydraulic Brake Lines and Fittings Kit, part number T482-9900.